All right, here's a, a quick tutorial on Idea Maker for setting it up for the TiVo Tarantula. Uh, and I suppose any uh, Prusa clone. But once you download it and install it, you're going to want to add any file, any uh, STL to the build plate here. And then go up here to Printer. Go down to Printer Settings and we're gonna add a printer right here so it'll bring up this one where you can name it and we'll just call it the uh, TT and we're gonna set all of our settings from our usable slicer the one we normally use whether that's repeater or cura or slicer or s3d whatever whatever you wanted to use and you're gonna add in uh, all your information here and now you can name this tivo tarantula or what it, whatever you want to name it but for quick we'll just do a quick run through and I'm just gonna put these at 200 just quick if you have the large bed uh, input your information there you know and uh, leave your E steps here at zero uh, these can stay at 100 both of these we are using a heated bed if you have one uh, this is your offsets uh, change your extruder count to if you have one or two and then to 175 PLA ABS that doesn't really matter right now and then once you hit OK oh well I already have one we'll just name it T alright now you have your bed width and everything set up here and you can set the baud rate if you want it to connect I haven't tried that yet for a d direct connection maybe one of you guys can do it and tell me if it works okay so once we have this it's set up for the build plate Now, you're going to go up here and you're going to take the Idea Printer F100. You'll select that and you see it gives you three templates. Um, I took the standard and just select it and export. And you're going to ex export this, <coughs> excuse me, this template to the desktop. So it's somewhere anywhere easy to find. So we're going to export that and save it and then close out make sure you're still on your printer we named this uh, test one T and then we will go to slice which is this guy here and of course it's not gonna have a template because it wasn't designed for this now we're gonna go over here to import go to the desktop we'll scroll down and find the template that we saved earlier and you can rename it or not okay now from here, once that's in here for this uh, profile you can go to edit set your infill uh, 15 to 20 percent seems to be the standard your shells at your outer layer whether you want a skirt brim raft uh, both neither you can set that on uh, set that here and any kind of support now support you can leave it none for now and I'll get to that in a minute uh, we'll go to advanced now and here is where we can get into all the ins and outs of what is on your using you the slicer you're using now and basically you're gonna go through your settings on your old slicer and transfer them all into here um, they got for your infill and and you can, you'll have to repeat this step of export and import and rename and go through if you have more than one slicer profile say if you have like a extra fine setting or a, or anything like that so once you have all these transferred in from your standard slicer right 
cooling. You can set different cooling fan for those of us who have overpowered layer fans. That comes in real handy. Uh, and basically, you'll just go through this. This is where you'll edit your start and end G code. It's all pretty self-explanatory when it comes to that. So when you're done, you'll hit OK. And that will be saved. So you can save and close that. And now you have your first, uh, I guess you could call it uh, filament profile for slicing. So let's try it on this little Boba Fett guy. We're going to go down here to slice. Eh, and a matter of fact, you know what? Let's get rid of that. Since I didn't transfer any of my settings here, we'll go to the one that I already have set up, which would be here. And then we'll slice it because I have all my uh, my settings from Cura transferred over. So we'll re-slice it, and we can go to Preview. And in Preview is where you get your different layers, different here and there's. You can look at it and play with all that stuff. It's all it. it this part is all pretty much the same as everybody else. The part that interests everybody about this is right here. Supports. There we go. See, you click this little tab here and it brings up the sidebar. This is where you can set the pillar size, your overhang angle, whether you want it everywhere or touching the platform. And here's the big boy right here. The supports on this are vastly better than Slicer or Cura or really any of the other free ones and the bonus being manual supports. So what you would do is click add and it will add a support wherever this green bar shows. So if you wanted to say support his chin a little bit more you just click uh, left click there and add some more supports and uh, we'll go here and we'll get a couple right here All right and it does it you really want your uh, support beams to overlap when they overlap the supports are connected if you just have a single one standing in space like say this guy that support is probably going to fail. You would really want to come back in and fill that closed and the slicer will take over depending on your support pattern and fill in that solid area. Now if you wanted to remove supports all you do is click here on remove and you can select even the auto generated supports and remove them individually. Now I know with all these backs removed this print would fail but just let's say uh, that's how I wanted it I added the extra supports I needed we'll add some for this little antenna up here because I know from printing this earlier that that antenna comes out a little wonky so that's all you would have to do now that uh, antenna is fully supported go up to slice select the profile we transferred our settings in from our previous slicer and hit slice and now here's where I said you can leave that on no supports because I changed it under the support tab up here earlier and put touching build plate supports and then added manual supports it's asking me if I want to turn supports on well I do and that'll that'll ask you every time you add supports to a project but not force you to have them should you have a print that doesn't require supports they won't be there so I would just click yes we'll go to the preview we'll look at our layers here and as you can see we have the infill from our previous slicer and you can see the supports being drawn. 
and see how each brick, when they connected before slicing, it adds supports all the way through where you have those, <coughs> those bricks or towers or what have you. So if everything there looks fine, we can close that and then we can click export and then you would save it as a G code to whatever file you keep your G codes in or save it directly to your SD card ready for print. And that is about all it takes to get this up and running. Now fine tuning uh, may be a little bit different than your traditional slicer. Uh, <clears throat> I've only been using it for about two and a half weeks. Uh, I do find it's, it's, it's pretty solid. And uh, the best part is, like I said, uh, those manual supports right here without having to shell out, uh, what, what is it now, $150 for S3D? Yeah, for a uh, free program, it does pretty well. So I hope you uh, found this helpful, and uh, let me know what you think. All right, thanks, guys.